Y'all ready? How many of y'all got covered in eyes? <laughs> <laughs> Jack. <laughs> we do always rise and give honor to the most high y'all, his son, Yeshua, the true Messiah. Always to all of y'all's Kodesh preachers in every place, preaching, teaching his divine word. I was to the beloved minister that labor with me in this part of Vineyard, whom I'm not ashamed to call brethren. Kodesh greetings to them in their respective places. Always to the those that are watching my way of live internet, to the dispersed, to the scattered, to the Jews first, and also to the Gentile. Could this greeting to them in their perspective places. As we often say last, never least, to the way of Yah synagogue. Amen. Proper unto you all in your perspective places. Amen. Once again, from TV, internet, radio, wherever our voice can be heard, wherever we can be seen. Before we came on, had nothing come on. When we go out, absolutely. Nothing else Ain't nothing on. else coming on. That's right. If they're not teaching Kodesh, Living a clean, sanctified life. The people ain't in nothing, and they hadn't heard nothing. Whoa, this is an attempt to collect, the debt. to collect the debt. Whatever you hypocrite, false pretend, backbite, mumbling, grumble against will be used in that collection of a debt. These messages are always being recorded for quality assurance to make sure no side deals get covered with nobody, but everybody got to come in. Brother Red, straight, narrow path. All right, St. John chapter 6 at verse 44. Wonderful Savior. This is St. John chapter 6 at verse 44. Listen to the book. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him. And what are you going to do? And I will raise him up at the last day. Tell him what's written. It is written in the prophets. Yeah. And they shall be all taught of God. Come on. Every man, therefore, that hath heard and hath learned of the Father. What they come? Unto me. St. John chapter 5 and verse 39. Listen to the book. Search the scriptures. For in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And they are who? They which, which testify do what? of me. They are they which testify of me. Wonderful Savior. Amen. Pick me up at the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, <clears throat> verse 25. Son, give me one of them waters up down. I don't know, y'all made my throat dry. Y'all know what this is? <laughs> it don't go with a pamphlet. No, it's all right. <laughs> Thank the Lord. Wonderful Savior. Give me a bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Mm-hmm. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Thank everybody for coming. Hope y'all enjoyed the service today with me. What's in that thing? Gas, Abraham? Woo! All right. Thank the Lord. Woo. What was that? Genesis chapter 1. Verse 25. Turn some air conditioning out of the wow. Genesis chapter 1, verse 25. Listen to the book. And God made the beast of the earth. And God made the beast of the earth after its kind. And cattle after their kind. And cattle after its kind. And everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. Yes. And God saw that it was good. And God saw it was good. And God said, let, it, is, let us make man in our image. In our image. After our likeness. After our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Let us make, back me up again, let us make who? Let us make man. Let us make M-E-N? Man. Singular, plural. Singular. After who? In our image. In our who? Our likeness. Our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth mm -hmm. and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Talk to him. So God created man in his own image. In, in the who? In the image of God created he him. So God did what now? God created man in his own image. In the image of who? God created he him. And what did God do? Male and female created he them. God did what? Created man in his own image. Come on. In the image of God created he him. That's important for us. That's very key and essential to us. Genesis chapter 2. 
at verse 16. Listen to the book. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Yeah. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. What did God tell the man? For in the day that thou eatest thereof. Back me up. What did God do at verse 16? And the Lord God commanded the man. And the Lord God commanded the who? Man. To do what? Saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Yes. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. What kind of tree was it? The knowledge of good and evil. Yes. Thou shalt not eat of it. What's going to happen? For in the day that thou eatest thereof, yeah. thou shalt surely die. At verse 16. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou, may free, thou mayest freely eat. Mm -hmm. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. At the third chapter of the book of Genesis, 3 and 1. Oh, information. Ain't nothing y'all don't already know. Listen to the book. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field, yeah. which the Lord God had made. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Mm -hmm. And the woman said unto the serpent, What did she say? We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Yeah. But of the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, yeah. God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. Why? Neither shall ye touch it, yeah. lest ye die. Lest ye what? Die. Die. Come on, son. And the serpent said unto the woman, What happened? Ye shall not surely die. What's going to happen? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. And what's going to happen? And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Mm -hmm. At the Genesis, the third chapter, at the 17th verse. Before you get me that, before you get to the 17th verse, come on down and finish reading. Wait, that's 3 and 4? Where you left out, 3 and 4? Uh, yes, sir, I'm at 3 and 5. 3 and 5, finish that up. Come on. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yeah. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, mm -hmm. and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise. What happened? She took of the fruit thereof. And did what? Eat. Mm -hmm. And gave also unto her husband with her. Yeah. And he did eat. And he did what? Eat. He did what? Eat. Come on. And the eyes of them both were open. Yeah. And they knew that they were naked. Mm. Mm. Jump over and give me uh, verse 16. 316. Make it 17. 317. Y'all all right? Listen to the book. And unto Adam he said, What happened? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Yeah. And hast eaten of the tree, mm -hmm. of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Yeah. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. What else? In sorrow shalt thou eat of it yeah. all the days of thy life. Mm -hmm. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. Yeah. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Yeah. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Yeah. Till thou return unto the ground. Mm -hmm. For out of it was thou taken. And what happened? For dust thou art, and unto, dirt, unto dust shalt thou return. Mm. I had to start looking at something, huh? Well, let's start, I guess we're going a little trip a little bit. Start to kind of examine and start looking at things. Pick me up at that 14th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 14 and 11. <clears throat> the book of Isaiah chapter 14 at verse 11. Isaiah 14 and 11. Amen. Listen to the book. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave. Yeah. And the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee. Mm -hmm. And the worms cover thee. Yes. How art thou fallen from heaven? Who? O Lucifer. Who? O Lucifer. Yeah. Son of the morning. Son. Singular. How many sons we have? One. Give me the third chapter of the book of, uh, third chapter of the book of Luke. Luke 3. See if we're about verse 30. See if about 43 might be what I want. What in the world all this got to do with anything? Listen to the book. Which verse would you like? Verse 43. No 39 verse. is the last verse. 38 is the last verse. Back me up about 35. Listen. Amen. Which was the son of Saruk. Which, which was, was the, the son, son of, of Ragu. Uh, which, hold on. Which was the son of who? Saruk. Yeah. Which was the son of Ragau. Yeah. Which was the son of Felek. Yeah. Which was the son of Heber. Yeah. Which was the son of Selah. Yeah. 
which was the son of Kynan, yeah. which was the son of Arphaxed, yeah. which was the son of Sim, uh -huh. which was the son of Noah. Which was the son of Noah? Come on. Which was the son of Lamech. Yes. Which was the son of Methuselah. Yeah. Which was the son of Enoch. Yeah. Which was the son of Jared. Yeah. Which was the son of Meleel. Yeah. Which was the son of Canaan. Yeah. Which was the son of Enos. Yeah. Which was the son of Seth. And who else was Which that? was the son of Adam. Which was the son of who? Adam. Which was the son of who? God. So he asked the question at the 14th chapter of the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 14 and verse 11. Thy pump is brought down to the grave. Yeah. And the noise of thy vials. The worm is spread under thee. And the worms cover thee. Listen. How art thou fallen from heaven? Oh, who? Lucifer. Son of the who? Morning. Talking about Adam. Son is singular. When you start tracing everybody else, everybody else traced back to a father, except for Adam. Adam traced back and said he was son of God. That's right. So who created the son? Genesis 1 and 1. Let's see who created the son. Adam means it's Hebrew for us, which will turn us back to Greek. I mean, which will turn us back to meaning man. That's what Adam means. He did not say, let us make men. He said, let us make man. Listen. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yes. And the earth was without form. Yeah. And void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. Yeah. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And what happened, son? And God said... Let there be light. And what happened? And there was light. So who created the sun? That's why when you trace Adam back, he had to tell you son of God. Now we start looking at how did he fall. And he only parallels the one man. Huh? Right. Y'all all right? Amen. Hold on. Let's see what happened over here. Give me the uh, fifth chapter of the book of St. John. Five. Fifteen. I know y'all heard it before, but you need to make sure we get confirmation. Huh? It makes sense when you go back and start looking. This is St. John chapter 5 at verse 16. Listen to the book. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus. Why? And sought to slay him. I'm so confused. Because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Listen. But Jesus answered them, my father worketh hitherto. He said, my father worketh hitherto. And I work. And I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him. For what reason? Because he not only had broken the Sabbath. But what else did he say? Said also that God was his father. He said he was Adam. That God was his father. So he said he was Adam. Amen. What did that mean if he did that? Making himself equal with God. Let's see what he said at Genesis 1 and 20, 25. Genesis 1 25. Y'all all right? Amen. Listen to the book. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind. Only made sense. Where they came out from, it had to resemble it. Couldn't make an elephant that came out looking like a cheetah. That's right. That's right. Couldn't make a rabbit coming out looking like an ox, could he? That wouldn't make sense. So every creature he made, he had to make sure it looked just like its kind. Listen. And cattle after their kind. Yeah. And everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. Yeah. And God saw that it was good. And what happened? And God said, let us make man. Let us make men. Man. Singular. Tell me about him. In our image. In who image? Our image. And in what else? And after our likeness. You hold what you got. Give me St. John chapter 14, verse 10. Wonderful Savior. What what he looked like, he was going to say and make every creature after his kind. Every tree had its seed in itself and he had to bring forth a tree like it. And God brought forth something he was going to call his son and had no resemblance. Mm. Let's see. This is St. John chapter 14 and verse 11. Listen to the book. Believe me that I am in the Father. Back milk. Come on. And the Father in me. Yeah. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Come on. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Bad metal about verse 7. Amen. Come down. Come on. If ye had known me, you should have known my father also. If you, hold on. If you did what now? Had known me. What you should have known? Known my father also. Have you seen one elephant? You've seen all of them. You've seen one giraffe? You've seen all of them. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen God. Listen. And from henceforth, you know him. 
and have seen him. Yeah. Philip said unto him, Lord, shew us the Father, and it sufficeth us. Talk to me. Jesus said unto him. What did he tell him? Have I been so long time with you? And yet? Has thou not known me, Philip? Talk to me. He that hath seen me. What you seen? Has seen the Father. You seen Adam. According to Genesis 125, he just told, I made everything after this kind. And then he sat and said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness. What did you think he just told him, man, when he said, he, said, he that seen me has seen the Father? He had to tell me what Adam. Adam, the only man could trace back that we know could say son of God. He came to Ezekiel, and every one of them, he would refer to him as son of who? He would never call him son of God. Never take that. Jesus took on both titles. He became God and man. He was both human and divine. That's why he told him about the son of man. Being crucified, the son of man. He could have never told you the son of God. He told the son of man. He told you about Jonah. And he was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. What was the son of God going to be? The heart of the earth. That's exactly right. Pick me up and see what he said in the 12th chapter of the book of Matthew, verse 37. Man. Well, they felt good anyway. Let's see what he said. <laughs> 12th chapter of the book of Matthew, verse 37. Don't let nobody trip y'all up. Y'all know what? You need to know that this is your salvation. That's right. You know how many people ripped Genesis out of the book? It's yeah. non-essential. Once we read about creation, that's it. They have no understanding of how that man connected everything in every place. He told her to search the scripture. You think you saved? The book talking about me. Listen to the book. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, yeah. and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Come on. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered. What did they want to know? Saying, about? Master, yeah. we would see a sign from thee. Come on. But he answered and said unto them, That what? An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And what happens, son? And there shall no sign be given to you. Hear what he said? He said, if you want to seek a sign, you were evil. Is that what he said? No. He was talking about a generation that go contrary, and they looking for a sign. That's right. You ain't going to get it. He was never saying you were evil. I ain't looking for no sign. Jesus said you evil and you're an adulterer. You'll cheat on your wife or husband if you look for a sign. That's not what he told them. He was letting them know y'all are evil and you wicked. And ain't no sign going to be given to you except. But the sign of the prophet Jonas. Tell me about it. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Tell me where the son of God was. So shall the son of man. See that? You got to pay attention. Because he referred to Ezekiel as son of man. So he had to be human and divine. He had to. He knew exactly what he was saying. Mm. They missed it. It looked like the man, he flip-flops a lot. Where he sat here and just said, hitherto he worked, his father do the same thing. So you saying that you son of God. Then he come back and say, only sign going to be given, son of man going to be three days. Three. This boy don't know who he is. You think it's him or you don't know. He knew exactly what he was saying. Ain't no way in the world he told you son of God was going to be there. Son of man, the flesh was going back. Not him. He's going back to his father. Wow. Y'all all right? Amen. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Pick me back at that 14th chapter of the book of Isaiah. No, Lord, woke me up this morning with this. For whatever reason, woke me up with this. This is the 14th chapter of the book of Isaiah at verse 11 again. Amen. Listen to the book. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave. That brilliant display. Come on, son. And the noise of thy vials, the worm is spread under thee. Yeah. And the worms cover thee. Why would he tell him that, brother? He was in the grave. He was put in a cave. What's going to be under him? Worm, what's going to be over him? They cover him. Listen. How art thou fallen from heaven? Oh, Lucifer. Son of the who? Morning. Now, how could they be talking about the devil? Now, by their word, the devil was an angel at one time, was he not? That's what they say. Well, let's see what he said at the book of Hebrews chapter 1. Info. Oh. That's right. Y'all getting sharper. Now, people like to pull their family heirlooms out and show their they album cover. This I was right here. That's right. Where the picture's at so we can see them when we read it. That's right. They're in our heart. They're in the writings. That's right. Ain't that right? This is our family album. They've been passed down to us. This is our album right here. You got anything with your family in it? Yeah, right here. Wonderful Savior. Yes, he Listen to the book. Verse 4. Mm-hmm. Being made so much better than the angels. Listen. As he hath by inheritance 
obtained a more excellent name than they. Listen. For unto which of the angels said he at any time. What he say? Thou art my son. This what? Day have I begotten. So would it make sense that Lucifer would be called son? No. If he was a fallen angel, how in the world would he ever called a son? That's right. Let's see what he said in the book of Job. Job chapter one right quick. You hold what you got. He holding me Hebrews chapter one about verse five. Yes, sir. Hold that for me. Matter of fact, make it verse four. Let's see what he told us in the book of Job. Book of Job chapter one. Jump down where I want about verse nine. Listen. Then Satan answered the Lord and said. Back me up about verse nine. Back me up about verse seven. Amen. Listen. And the Lord said unto Satan. Make me up that sixth verse. Amen. Come on. And there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves. There was a what now? A day. When the what? Sons of God. There was a day. When the sons of God. When the S-O-N? Sons. Of did, who? Of God. Did what? Came to present themselves before the Lord. And who was there? Satan came also among them. Didn't come when Yeshua was there. He came when the sons were there. Couldn't fake that look. Couldn't mimic that. Let's see what Paul told us. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12. Make it verse 11. Let's find out why we do this. For whatever reason he wants us to cover this again. I don't know how people being thrown so bad. That's how much knowledge still in this book concerning that man. And y'all know what? We ain't even tipped the iceberg on that. Amen. Listen to the book. Wherefore, because I love you not. God what? God knoweth. God know if I love y'all not. But tell me why you do what you do, Paul. But what I do. That? I will do. Y'all think I'm going to stop. That I might do what? Cut off occasion from them. Which do what? Desire occasion. Wherein? They glory. That they might do what? Found even as we. For such are false apostles. False. False apostles. Deceitful. Workers. Transforming. Themselves into the apostles of Christ. Is this amazing? And no marvel. And no what? Marvel. No what? Marvel. Tell me why, Brandon. For Satan himself. Is what? Transformed into an angel of light. He was transformed. He was transformed into the son of God. When well, it makes sense that he would have been Lucifer, does it? No. No. Not according to Paul and Job's statement. That's right. Said there was a day. What happened that day? One and six. When the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And who was there? And Satan came also among them. And what did he say? And the Lord said unto Satan. And the Lord said unto Lucifer. Satan. What did he say? Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord. You know, he ain't going to know the son. That's right. He's not going to know the son. Wow, people ought to be feeling dumb and dumb about a second. Yeah. Wouldn't make sense that Lucifer would be the devil. By no account. Why wouldn't he call him Lucifer then? You come and you illuminate, you faking light. That had been, been the most opportune time to call him Lucifer. Yeah. Where you come from, devil? Wow. Where was he coming from? From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, as thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth. And you know who that would be, wouldn't it? Amen. That would be Yeshua. Wasn't none like him. Wonderful Savior, isn't it? Amen. Come on back to what you had. He had me 2 Corinthians chapter. Before I got you 2 Corinthians, where I had y'all look? Hebrews. Hebrews, Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 1. 1 4. Hebrews chapter 1 at verse 4. Listen to the book. Being made so much better than the angels. Matter of fact, bad man, give me verse 2. Listen. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. By his S-O-N-S? By his son. Still wouldn't be the devil, would it? Amen. That would be Lucifer or Adam, wouldn't it? Amen. Listen. Whom he hath appointed heir of all things. To come into possession. And we know our law. Who gets the possession? The son, the firstborn. What's the name for firstborn? Reuben. When Jacob blessed his son, he said, Reuben died out of my what? So you're my firstborn. Listen. 
by whom also he made the world. By whom also he made the worlds. Come on, son. Who being the brightness of his glory. Whoa, my goodness, being the brightness of his coming and the ex what? Express image of his person. Sound like Adam. Let us make man in our image, in our what? Right. How you going to tell me that man wasn't Adam? When you just say Hebrew, just come here and tell you that. The express image of God, being the brightness of his person. That was Adam. Listen. And upholding all things by the word of his power. Listen. When he had by himself. Did what? Purged our sins. By himself. Isaiah told about whose stripes. We're healed. We're healed. Listen. Sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. And who testified concerning that? David. What did David say? I heard the Lord say unto who? My Lord. Do what? To hear my right hand. What does the David say about him? Let's see what he told us. Second chapter of the book of Acts of the Apostles. Give me probably about verse 19. Let's read now. Listen to the book. Acts chapter 2 and about verse 19. Amen. Listen. And I will shoot wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath. Like what? Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Yeah. The sun shall be turned into darkness. And the what? Moon into blood. Come on. Before the great and notable day of the Lord come. Yeah. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Come on, son. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Talk to him, man. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Come on. Whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death. Why? Because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Come on. For David speaketh concerning him. Like what? I foresaw the Lord always before my face. I saw, I did what? Foresaw the Lord always before my face. Where he at? He is on my right hand. That I should do what? And I should not be moved. Thank God for the spirit. Isaiah had already told her that though the Lord gave him the bread of adversity, the water of affliction. You shall not thy teacher be removed in the corn anymore, but, I, I, but thine eyes shall see thy who? Huh? Who thine eyes going to see? His teacher. Let's see what he told us at the 8th chapter of the book of St. John about verse 26. Wonderful saving. Amen. We need to know this, don't we? Amen. That's what Isaiah told us, didn't he? Let's see what he said. This is St. John chapter 8 at verse 26. Listen to the book. I have many things to say well, and what to happened? judge of you. Yeah. But he that sent me is true. Come on, son. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. Listen. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Listen. Then said Jesus unto them. What did he tell them, son? When ye have lifted up the Son of Man. What they gonna know? Then shall ye know that I am he. Listen. And that I do nothing of myself. But talk to him. How you do it, son? But as my father hath taught me. As my who? Father. Had did what? Taught me. Who taught you? My father. What did he do? Taught me. What you do? I speak these things. His eye gonna see his teacher. He said, I foresaw him always on my right hand. I should not be moved. Oh, y'all already knew this, though. This is elementary, dear Watson. What I got you holding? Hey, Acts 2 and 25. You can let that go. Wonderful Savior. Y'all good? Everybody ready to go home? No. That's real dirty. Come on back to that 14 chapter book, Isaiah. Amen. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 11. We ain't got past 11 yet, have we? I think we made it to 12, yeah, didn't we? Made it 12. Let's see what happened. Thy pump is brought down to the grave. Yeah. And the noise of thy This body. is Isaiah 14 and 11. Amen. Come on. The worm is spread under thee. This side is a little warm over him. Listen. And the worms cover thee. Listen. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Yeah. Son of the morning. How did the sun wind up going down? Listen. How art thou cut down to the ground, which did his weaken the nation? Listen. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. What happened? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. What's going to happen, son? I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. Yeah. In the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Yeah. I will be like the most high. Who you going to be like? 
The most high. Who you gonna be like? The most high. Who you gonna be like? The most high. Genesis chapter two again. Verse 16. Genesis 2, 16. Listen. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. Yeah. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, yeah. thou shalt not eat of it. Come on, son. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, What's going to happen? Thou shalt surely die. And give me the third chapter of the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. At verse 3. Listen. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it. Listen. Neither shall ye touch it. Come on, son. Lest ye die. Come on, son. And the serpent said unto the woman, What happened? Ye shall not surely die. What's going to happen? For God doth know in that, the what? It, that in the day ye eat thereof, What's going to happen? Then your eyes shall be opened. And what's going to happen? And ye shall be as gods. Knowing? Good and evil. What's going to happen the day I eat it? Then your eyes shall be open. And what's going to happen? And ye shall be as gods. And what's going to happen? Knowing good and evil. Mm. 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 Knowing good and evil. Wonderful Savior. Isn't it? Amen. Wonderful Savior. Pick me up if you would right quick at the, uh, let's talk about women preachers. <laughs> Pick me up if you would, First Timothy chapter 2. Verse 11. Get these women preachers out the way. First Timothy chapter 2 at verse 11. Amen. Listen to the book. Let the woman learn in silence. With what? All subjection. Talk to me, son. But I suffer not a woman to... Y'all hear what he just told you? Sisters, y'all hear that? I suffer not a woman to do what? Teach. Huh? Teach. Nor? To usurp authority over the man. But to do what? Be in silence. Talk to me. For Adam was first formed. Then who? Eve. Talk to me, son. And Adam was not deceived. What happened? But the woman being deceived. Ho, ho, ho. What happened to Adam? Was not deceived. What happened? But the woman being deceived. Back up, back up. What happened to Adam? Was not deceived. Pick me up again in the 14th chapter of the book of uh, 14th chapter book of Isaiah. Verse 12. What verse are you holding for me right there? 2, 13. 14. Hold 14. Deceived. I want you to finish. Just hold right now. Let's see what happened over him. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 11. Verse 12. Listen. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Yeah. How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? Talk to me. For thou hast said in thine heart. Thou had did what? Said in thine heart. What you do? I will ascend into heaven. What's going to happen? I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Yeah. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation. Yeah. In the sides of the north. What happened? I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Tell me what you're going to do, son. I will be like the most high. So why y'all think Adam ate it? At 2 and 13? Listen to what he said. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Then Adam was what? First formed. If Adam were first formed, what did that make Adam? Son of God. Made in his what? And what else? Listen. Then Eve. And Adam was not deceived. How did he wind up falling? Did he wind up saying in his heart? Because he told him not to eat of that tree. That tree had knowledge. The day you wind up eating that knowledge and you take on that knowledge, you're going to wind up dying. And he's going to be able to know good and evil. Let's see what he told us again in the fifth chapter of the book of St. John. St. John 5. Y'all already knew this, right? One person told the truth. The rest of them said, yeah, we knew it. St. John chapter 5. At verse 16. Listen to the book. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus yeah. and sought to slay him yeah. because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. Yeah. But Jesus answered them, 
My father worketh hitherto, <laughs> uh -huh. and I work. Listen. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him. What happened? Because he not only had broken the Sabbath. But what did he do? But said also that God was his father. Doing what? Making himself equal with God. Mm. Jump down and give me about the 20th verse. Come on. For the father loveth the son. And do what? Sheweth him all things that himself doeth. Talk to him. And he will shew him greater works than these. Why? That ye may marvel. Come on. For as the father raiseth up the dead. What happened? And quickeneth them. Yeah. Even so the son quickeneth whom he will. Come on, son. For the father judgeth no man. For the who? The father judgeth no man. What did he do? But hath committed all judgment unto the son. So on the day you get that knowledge, you're going to be able to know between good and evil. You're going to be able to make judgment. You're going to be able to make judgment. He came into the knowledge of who he was. What was going to happen? And the thing was, we tried to wonder why in the world, how many times I blamed Adam too. I said, how stupid could you be? You got an opportunity chance to sit here and you can have eternal life on this end and you wind up going here and eating of that tree. That could be the dumbest thing ever. But then Paul tried to tell him when we were so busy looking at women preaching, Adam was not deceived. We want to know how did Lucifer fall? Because he said in his heart. That's right. Why didn't trick him to do nothing? That's right. Why trick him to do nothing? Say that the tenth chapter first. Say that Jane John chapter ten. Say that verse sixteen, my brother. I won't. Why am I thinking ten? Ten sixteen. Let me say it ten sixteen. Whole time we were sitting here like, man, we blame the women. These women sat here and messed us up. We not listen to the women. Nobody made the man do nothing. That's why Isaiah was sitting there trying to look. Want to know how did he fall? Because he said in his heart, if I'm gonna be made in your image, your light, it's only natural. I'm gonna be looking for the same seat. Same rites and ritual. He sat here and said in his heart. He wanted to do What else am I going to want to do? If I'm a God, where am I want to sit? Down here? I want to sit on high. I want to be over the other sons. If I'm the elder and I'm the firstborn, I want to be over the other sons. He said when he brought them into the world, what did he say? Let's see what he said. Hebrews 1 again. Well, that sound bad. Yeah, the family unit, I can't, I can't cook, look, cook, I don't know. Auntie, uncle. Yeah, right, family reunion, we go back more than one time. He left off at Hebrews 1 and 4. Come on, folks, I want y'all to get alert. This y'all salvation. Everybody testifying to a man they can't possibly. You see, these people don't know this man. There's no way in the world they know him. Listen. Being made so much better than the angels. Listen. As he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Listen. For unto which of the angels said he at any time. This what? Thou art my son. This day. Have I begotten thee. Talk to me, Branham. And again. Again. I will be to him a father. And what happened? And he shall be to me a son. Which one of the angels could ever testify to that? This is what else he said. And again. Again. When he bringeth in, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world. What did he possibly say? He saith. And let all the angels of God worship him. What y'all think Adam was saying? Hmm? I'm going to send into heaven. I'm going to sit on the mount of the congregation. I'm going to be over the stars of God. In the sides of the north, I'm going to be like the most high. That's how he wound up falling. Fifth chapter just told you it would have killed him by the Sabbath day stunts he pulled. But when he said God was his father, wind up getting Adam killed. He told Adam the day he eat of that tree, what was going to happen? You take on the knowledge of God, what you think going to wind up happening to you? And you thought it was a story about Adam, huh? All he was saying in his heart, he wanted to sit over the congregation. Mm. He said when he brought the firstborn in the world, he said, now let all the angels of God worship him. Not one time he would have told that to the angel. No, not one time he said he told that to an angel. He never would have told that to Satan. Then we wonder why Adam would sit here and go ahead and just eat of that tree. Hmm. 57 chapter again in the book of Isaiah. Verse 17. Y'all all right, ain't you? Listen to the book. For the iniquity of his covetousness, covetousness was I wrong. Look at it. You know what happened? God said, look at him. You know why he was mad? This boy trying to be like me. He told Adam in the garden, 
Don't mess with that tree. That tree that'll make you like me. That's why he was wroth with him. Put him and his wife out. He just told her right in the book of Isaiah why he was mad with him. What did he just, why was you upset, Lord? For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wrong. What did the covet? What did our Lord teach about covetous? Nothing that's thy neighbor. All he was trying to do was just be like the father. He said, here to my father, I do the same thing. I know my father, he be judging, I be judging too. My father give light and raise people up. I do the same thing. He said, for the iniquity of his what? Covetousness. What's, what happened, Lord? Was I wrong? That's why I was angry with him. Talk to him. And smote him. And I wind up smoking. That's why I let him hit him. Adam was just a parallel to him. Adam couldn't help but to go and eat of that tree. I'm the son of God. When I come into the world, everybody got to worship me. He said, let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over everything. Every... I want to be like the most high. He said, that's why I was wrong. I told the boy, I said, the day you eat of that tree, good and evil, you're going to surely die. Why not getting him killed? Listen. I hid me and was wrong. I hid me and I was wrong. And we, and Whoa. What did Adam wind up doing at the eight? He hid himself. Come on. And he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. That's why he would let you know about Eve was the seed. He wanted all the seed. He went on and did it anyway. Yeah. What's that, 10 and 12 I want to say, John? Might be 16. Let's see. St. John chapter 10, about verse 12. 16 coming to my mind for some reason. Let's see. We'll start at 12. Listen. But he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not. What do he do? See if the wolf coming. And what do he do? Leaveth the sheep. Listen. And fleeth. And fleeth. Come on, son. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. Talk to me. The hireling fleeth because he is an hireling. Why else are they going to run and leave it? He don't have nothing in it. It's just a job for him. It ain't a lifestyle. He don't have nothing in it. Listen. And careth not for the sheep. What you do? I am the good shepherd. So what happened? And know my sheep. What happened? And am known of mine. Yeah. As the Father knoweth me. Yeah. Even so know I the Father. Yeah. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Talk to me. And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Yeah. Them also I must bring. And they shall hear my voice. Yeah. And there shall be one fold. And one shepherd. Come on. Therefore doth my father love me, because I lay down my life, that I might take it again. Yeah. No man taketh it from me, but he I lay it down. He went on forwardly. What you said? In the way of his heart. Is that what you said, Brandon? No man taketh it from me. He went on for. He read Isaiah the 57 chapter, 17 verse. Is that what he read? What did he say happened, Brandon? No man taketh it from me. So your wife tricked you into eating that fruit. What you do? No man taketh it from me. What happened? But I lay it down of myself. What happened? I have power to lay it down. And do what? And I have power to take it again. At St. John chapter 5 and verse 21. Does that make any sense now that he was sat there and told him that? No man don't take my life. I lay it down. So I got power to do. I got power to pick it up. So I know my father. He know me too. St. John 5 and about 21. Amen. Listen. For as the father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. Yeah. For the father judges no man. Yeah. But had committed all judgment unto the son. Mm-hmm. That all men should honor the, honor the son, even as they honor the father. And he made him in his image and his likeness. Which means we had to give him the same honor that we had to give him. Listen. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father. Make it about verse 20. Make it 19. Listen to what it says. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. Mm -hmm. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Yeah. For the Father loveth the Son, and sheweth him all things that himself doeth. And he will shew him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Yeah. For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Come on. That all men should honor the Son, 
even as they honor the Father. Yeah. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which has sent him. Yeah. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me have everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. The son said he had power to do that. He can quicken whom he will. So don't you know if he could quicken them, he had enough to raise his own self up? He said, I got it. I saw the father. I watch what he do, and I do the same thing he do. And that's what wound up getting him killed. That's what wound up getting him killed. The mere fact that he sat around and he started emulating and mimicking the father. That will get you killed. We talked about that, didn't we? Isaiah wanted to know how did he wind up falling. Now we find out what was in Adam's heart. What was in Adam's heart? We found out. He was sitting here saying to himself, I'm going to be like the most high. It looked like he was led and taken off, but he was letting them know in the tent child. Somebody ain't took my life. I laid it down. I know how to judge and knew whether or not to do it or not, but that's what I want to do. I want to be like the most high. See if that's the 21st chapter, 22nd chapter come to my mind. Book of Luke. Luke 22. Luke 22. Let me see about verse 40. Let's see what that's like. Luke 22 and 40. Shoot from the hill. Y'all hear me out now. Listen to the book. And when he was at the place, he said unto them, Pray that ye enter not into temptation. Mm -hmm. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone's cast. Yeah. And kneeled down and prayed, mm -hmm. saying, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Yeah. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Mm -hmm. And there appeared an angel unto him from heaven, yeah. strengthening him. Yeah. And being in an agony. And being in a what? Agony. And being in a what? An agony. What did he do, son? He prayed more earnestly. And what happened? And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood. You hold oh. what you got. Matthew chapter 27. Verse 27. Listen to the book. Then Matthew the, chapter 27, verse 27. Listen. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall yeah. and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. Yeah. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. Yeah. And when they had platted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and a reed in his right hand. Hold what you got. What did they do to him? And when they had platted a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head. Back me back up, Brandon, 22. Luke 22. What verse you left off at? 41? 44. 44? Yes, sir. What happened? And being in an agony. And being in an agony. He prayed more earnestly. And what happened? And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood. At 27, 27, Matthew. Amen. What happened? Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall. Yeah. And gathered unto him. And gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers. Yeah. And they stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. And what happened? And when they had planted a crown of thorns, mm -hmm. they put it upon his head, and he read in his right hand. At 22, 44. Listen. And being in an agony, what happened, son? he prayed more earnestly. And tell me what happened. And his sweat was, as it were, great drops of blood. What was like drops of blood? And his sweat. And his what? Sweat. It was as what? As it were, great drops of blood. At Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 17. Amen. Listen to the book. And unto Adam he said. What did he say to the man? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Yeah. And hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying thou shalt not eat of it. Tell me what happened. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. What's going to happen? In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. He was in agony, wasn't he? Hold you got right quick. See about the... Uh, 13, see that the 21st chapter of the book of, uh, that's some, that's saying 22nd chapter, verse 16 of Luke. Let's see what he said. What did he say uh, at, at 317 unto Adam? He said, what? Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. What's going to happen? And hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee. 
saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. What's going to happen? Cursed is the ground for thy sake. So what's going to happen? In sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Hold on what you got. Let's see what happened over here at the, uh, at the 22nd chapter, verse 14, book, the book of Luke, Luke twenty two fourteen. Listen. And when the hour was come, what happened? he sat down and the 12 apostles with him. Yeah. And he said unto them, what happened? With desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Man, a lot of sorrow right now. A lot of agony right now. That's how he had to eat. He was the son. Who y'all think he was talking to, Adam? Oh, come on, folks. Y'all thought he was actually talking to Adam, the flesh man? He was talking to the son. The whole book is about the son. Wow. Y'all all right? Amen. The whole book is about the son. Let's see what he told us in the book of Isaiah chapter 53. Because I know y'all don't believe it. 53 and 1. Other brother, he's going to still hold me Genesis chapter uh, 3 verse 17. These people have no idea, do they? Listen to the book. Who has believed thy report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Listen. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant mm -hmm. and as a root out of a dry ground. Did you hear that? Did you tell Adam about how it won't be? Come on. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Listen. He is despised and rejected of men. Yeah. A man of sorrow. A man of what? Sorrow. What else about him? And acquainted with grief. That's what he told Adam it was going to be like for him. That's what he told me it was going to be like, wasn't it? So he go back to the ground. Let's see what happened at 317. Genesis 317. Listen. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, yeah. and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Come on. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Tell me about it. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it. Y'all hear what he told me it was going to be? In sorrow he was going to eat of it. That last meal, that was the worst meal for him. What else is going to happen, Adam? All the days of thy life. Yeah. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee. And what they wind up putting on his head? Crown of thorns. Make sense now? Yep. And talk to me. And thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Yeah. In the sweat of thy face what? Shalt, shalt thou eat bread. Boy, he was in agony. This sweat was just like drops of blood. You think the apostle knew this at the time? They had no idea why a man be sitting around sweating like that. He was in agony. He started to look at everything was written in him had to be fulfilled. The book told her, he said he was numbered among well. Transgress. For the things concerning me. Heaven is. So I go back to the dust. Here they were just looking to have a little fun. That, that, that stupid nigga they called him, you sure. He tried to claim he a clean a king. Let's do this, take some thorns and plat them and put them on his head. Well, it already was written there. So that's, that's what right. the ground was gonna bring me. Thorns. Yep. Sweat on my face, I'm gonna wind up eat. I'm sitting up here in my lab meal, I'm saying sweating like a they like, man, you sweat like somebody bleeding up in here. Yeah, that's what it said about me. Till I go back to the dust. And what happened to him after this? Till thou return unto the ground. For that's what we want to know about Lucifer. Taken. His pump. All his brilliant work were brought down to the grave. Mm. That's right. How did you wind up falling? Because he wanted to be like the most high. Conclusion for us. Did y'all even sit back there and examine yourself of what it's going to take for you to actually be saved? Mm. You're going to have mm. to live to die. That's right. And you're going to have to die to live. You're going to have to. What you're going to do is the thing that's the least obvious to people. People missed all this that he came to do, coming to show you, if you search the scriptures, in them you think that you have eternal life, 
And I assure you that every one of these people in this book, he said, was talking about me. Every one of those people were talking about him. How many people actually knew what Adam was thinking when he sat there and he ate that fruit? Ask some of these theologians. See, Adam was worried because the divorce courts and the laws were going to come out that he would wind up having to split half of the garden. And then the support that he would have to pay every month, 57 shekels to his wife and to his kids. So therefore, in order to keep his home and his marriage together, Brother Adam decided to eat with his wife. As we do today, men sat down and shared dinners with their wives, take them out on the town and different things. No, there's no difference. Seminary stupidity. But we learned that this man sat here and looked at what was written concerning him, he had to fulfill it. When God gave him the command at the beginning and said in the creation of him, I'm going to make him in my image, in my likeness. Let him rule, have dominion. And he got to rule with a rod of iron. Amen. He got to rule with a rod of iron. Because these people here, they'll say, and they'll come back and break whatever you got. That's what the prophet Hananiah did when he sat here and he took the yoke at the 28th chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Let's see how he wound up getting a rod of iron. 28th chapter of the book of Jeremiah. Give me about verse 4. Y'all all right? No, I said, you can't afford to come here and sleep. Soul on the line. Amen. This is uh, Jeremiah chapter 28. Uh, probably jump down. Let me, yeah, let me see about verse 4. See what that says. Listen to the book. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. Listen. With all the captives of, captives of Judah that went into Babylon, yeah. said the Lord. Yeah. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Y'all hear that? Come on. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of the priests, and in the presence of all the people. What did he say? That stood in the house of the Lord. Yeah. Even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. Jeremiah said, Amen. Pick me up at verse 1. 28 and 1. Listen. And it came to pass the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah. And who was Zedekiah for us? Last king. He was our last king in rule when we went into Babylon. Come on. In the fourth year and in the fifth month. That Hananiah, the prophet of Azur, the prophet which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of, of the priests and of all the people, saying, Yeah. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place. Come on. And carried them to Babylon. Yeah. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all oh, no, the speakers captives. might be too loud. I hear doing some hissing. Come on. With all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon. Come on. Said the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Come on. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord. Even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. Come on. The Lord do so. The Lord performed thy words which thou hast prophesied. Come on. To bring again the vessels of the Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon into this place. Come on. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears. Yeah. And in the ears of all the people. Talk to her. The prophets that have been before me. And. and before thee of old. Yeah. Prophesied both against many countries. Yeah. And against great kingdoms. Yeah. Of, of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophet which prophesied of peace. When the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. Turn his mic up just a little bit. Come on. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck. Then the prophet who? Hanan- then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck. And did what? Break it. Listen. And Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus said the Lord, Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. Come on. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet, after that Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Yeah. Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus said the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood. And what you gonna do? But thou shalt make them 
the, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. That's why he's going to rule us with a, with a rod of iron. Because you know the other way you're going to break it. Don't come right back to rule with a rod of iron. He know exactly what he was doing. They say he had broke it. They had the people think they were free. That's the problem today. What do we look at we consider even when we look at Adam? The mindset that we have to take on as people. He's been accredited and been accounted as almost one of the worst individuals. Everybody blames a lot of their downfalls on Adam. I was one. Anything go wrong? Had Adam did his part or Adam did? Adam did. Adam's whole life shaping and making was to come along and emulate the father. Doing that cost him his life. To those of us of intelligence of the flesh, that looked like the dumbest, stupidest, most ignorant move a man could have ever made for a woman. But then you consider us. His bride, his wife. Let's see what he told us on the fifth chapter of the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 5 and 20, 22. Listen to the book. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband and unto the Lord. Listen. For the husband is the head of the wife. He already told you he done put him over everything. He set him up to rule over everything. Why wouldn't the wife submit herself to him? He put him over everything. That's what happened in creation. That hadn't changed. I don't care what kind of liberalism these people come out with from Oprah Winfrey or Dr. Phil and one of these other suckers. Nothing changed. Listen. Even as Christ is the head of the congregation. Listen. And he is the savior of the body. So? Therefore, as the congregation is subject unto Christ. Y'all hear that? So what he wants to do? So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Especially since he created in the image of God. He's supposed to have the rule. That's what Genesis told him he supposed to do, didn't he? Mm -hmm. Supposed to rule over everything. Gave him dominion. What else would you be doing Why except doing it? He the savior of the body. Listen. Husbands, love your wives. Listen. Even as Christ also loved the congregation. As much as he also loved the congregation. And did what? Gave himself for it. And he was tricked. Gave himself for and it. And they took his life. Gave himself for it. I don't see what kind of mess it wife was in. Christ came right down here and seen what kind of mess we was in. And he went right on forward and did it. Could have just let her went on out by herself. But he gave himself for it. That's what Adam was thinking. How he could give himself for it. Listen. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Yeah. That he might present it to himself a glorious congregation. Not having what? Spot or wrinkle or any such thing. What's the last verse of that book? 33. Give me verse 32. Listen. This is a great mystery. This is a great what? Mystery. What happened, son? But I speak concerning Christ and the congregation. It was letting you know what he was thinking and what he was doing when he did it. That's a great mystery. I brought you back to Genesis. That's how we learn about having to rule. The man had to rule. The man, we gave the governor. He made the man in his image. And he gave the man to be in his likeness, not the woman. And everything was supposed to be subject to him. Well, he come back and let you know if you've known that from knowing the law, then guess what you should have known? I was actually talking about who? This but is I a speak. great who? This is a great mystery. Translated for us? Hidden, Hidden truth. Hidden truth. But I speak concerning Christ and the congregation. That's what he was talking about. He was talking about us. We should all know our roles that we should play in order to take on salvation. And the truth of the matter is, a lot of you don't. A lot of you actually don't. And the only reason he kept a lot of us around and have, keeping, and have kept a lot of our forefathers around is for the fact of reproduction. Just like he did with the woman. He going to get them a people. He kept around. When Paul sat around and told us about the man being not deceived, but the woman was deceived was found in the what? Nevertheless, she should be what? In what? I kept her around. Man can't do it by himself. I kept her around. 
A lot of y'all going to sit here and the Lord going to produce an obedient people right through you. That's what he did through our fathers. Came right back and let them know when he come back. They need folks to come back and they're going to see. They want to know, which got me these? I was left childless. They were cut off. They watched their baby being massacred coming out of Jerusalem. They want to know how in the world did all these people come out and proceed out from us. God going to get them a people. He will save you and keep you around to produce them a people. Whatever you do, y'all better use y'all here. At the 12th chapter of the book of St. John. Unravel your minds and your hearts on so many earthly things. Listen to the book. 12 and 1. 12 and verse 26. Amen. Listen. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. So how are we going to get down? Hmm? Did he enter in there with life? Nope. You got to lose this life. That's right. If any man serve me, he going to know my doctrine. He going to be where I'm at. Then what you think going to wind up happening to you if you actually serve the way you're supposed to do and keep his commandments? You're going to die. You're going to wind up dying. That's how you live. Come on, son. If any man serve me, yeah. him will my father honor. Listen. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? A man acquainted with grief and sorrow. That man talking about right there, my soul troubled. Oh, well, he got some sorrow thing going on him. Listen. Father, save me from this hour. Yeah. But for this cause came I unto this hour. At verse 21. Amen. Listen. The same came, therefore, to Philip, which was in Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Yeah. Philip cometh and telling, telleth Andrew. And what Andrew do? And again, Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And what happened? And Jesus answered them, saying. Except what? That I was come, that the Son of Man should be glorified. So what he told him? Verily, verily, I say unto you. Yeah. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die. What happened? It abideth alone. But? If it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So he went on forward. Really. For the covenants. That's why he was brutal. That's why he said I was so angry with this man. He went on anyway willingly to sit here and die and give his life up. Why do y'all fight so hard to try to keep living as a sinner? We know there's natural things we do, taking vitamin, taking medication, watching what we eat. A lot of these things we do in order to try to continue life in the natural and the flesh. But we're talking about dying to the flesh, to the will and the subjectness of the flesh that you commit sin, that you transgress, that you go against what you're being taught. Why do you fight so hard to do that? He realized, except that corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it, if it die, it bring forth much, much fruit. And y'all wonder why y'all so unproductive. Because you're still holding on to how to be disobedient. You just become more clever. And your cleverness is actually your stupidity. It's actually going to be key to why you're going to wind up falling and wind up busting hell wide open. There's no way to get around it. There's no way for any of us to escape it. The inevitable is going to happen. You're going to die and you're going to meet judgment. Our hearts and feelings and our caring about everything else in life ain't got nothing to do with God's word. None of this stuff is going to have any kind of value. Any kind of solace with God when he come in here to judge these people. When he come in here, he going to judge us with his truth. And if you hadn't obeyed, you don't possess the spirit, you hadn't followed, you hadn't complied, you're going to lift your eyes up in hell where everybody else that's already dead. You're going to meet them and you're going to burn in hell if you don't get it right. So the son was willing to do something. He went and lay his life down. He showed us a similitude of what he was willing to do. In complying and obeying the word, that's how you do it. Don't walk out here in front of the expressway, in front of traffic. Don't walk when the signs say, don't walk and walk out because you're going to show God you're willing to die. You're going to show God you're willing to die by obeying the word. Oh, son, don't go home and get no strict now or get no gas or, or get some kind of lighter fluid to sit outside. I'll burn my body up right now for God. That ain't what he want. He wants you to get your body in the middle of fact that you obey his word. Be a living sacrifice. Live to obey the word if you want to actually take on eternal life. Let's see another thing Adam did. At the third chapter of the book of Col uh, Colossians. Colossians 3 and 1. Let's look at Lucifer. Colossians 3 and 1. Listen to the book. If ye then be risen with Christ. How you going to rise? 
You got to die first. You got to be willing to set and die first, right? You can't go and bring up no crop that hadn't been planted. Well, if you then be risen with who? Christ. He didn't ask you if you raised up some of Christ. He's talking about you. If you have really died, what happened, son? Seek those things which are above. How did you fall, Lucifer? What did Lucifer want to do? Okay. The star. He wanted to ascend above the stars of God. He wanted to go into the heavens. Well, Colossians, come and ask you a question. If you then been risen with Christ, then you ought to seek those things. Which are above. Where who? Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. What you want me to do? Set your affection on For the things. covenants of his heart mm. was our wrong. He said that in his heart. It was in his heart to do it. It was in his heart. Well, now Colossians come along and talking about us. Huh? It's talking about us now. It already told us Christ. It said, if ye then be risen with Christ. If you have a connect, that's why you got to be in the Son. The whole promise of eternal life, the whole promise of possessing the kingdom, the whole book is about the Son. The only connection you got to the book is you got to be the Son. Because he just told you, if you then be risen with Christ. How many Christ is it? One. There's only one. So you couldn't be him. You got to be in him. Then you ought to seek those things which are where? Above. Where Christ? Sitteth on the right hand of God. That's what Lucifer said. What you want me to do? Set your affection on things above. Say it in his heart. I'll be like the most high. Mm -hmm. He told you to do it now. What is he telling me to do? He told me to become the son. That's right. Come on, folks. Oh, what you got? First Corinthians chapter 8. Romans 8. Romans 8 and 9. Let me say 8 and 6 is what I want. Give me 8 and 6. Let me see what it says. I want y'all to make sure we get understanding. A lot of people running around, they have no idea. There ain't, ain't nothing in this book for you except for you going to hell. Hmm. This whole book is about him. Everybody was a similar to it. None of these people came through had no idea that all they were doing was a similar to what this man was coming to do. They had no idea. Wow. Hold what you got right quick. See that first Peter chapter one? See if it's 2 Peter 1 and about verse 11. 2 Peter 1 and 11. Might be 1 Peter I want, but it's all the same word. Listen to the book. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them, and be established in the present truth. Come on. Yea, I think it meet. I want First Peter chapter 1. Let me hear verse 9. It's all the same word. Listen. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. That's what we look to get at the end. In your hope of belief. You're looking to possess something. Come on, son. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Which of which what now? Salvation. The who? The prophets have inquired and searched diligently. Listen. Who? Diligently. Diligently. Come on. It's the English language. Yes. Who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Well, listen to what they said. Searching what or what manner of time the spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ, and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed, and not unto themselves. Oh, unto who? Whom it was revealed. But not? Unto themselves. You think they knew? You think they knew? It was revealed, but not to them. What happened, son? But unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you. And now we come along giving you understanding concerning. They come along, David say, I heard D. Lord saying, you think he actually knew he was talking about his son. He couldn't have. He couldn't have. 
Because the book just said how they, they said here and it was revealed, but it wasn't to them. But unto us, and now we're reporting it unto you. You think these people actually knew this? You think Adam actually knew he was walking around and he was a similar to, to the literal son of God? Sitting around just sitting there, hmm, I want to be like God. I want to be like the most high. I want to sit over the mount of the congregation. I want to be above the stars of God. You think he actually knew? And willingly sitting here transgressing that he was going to come along, he was going to mimic the son? And the son was going to wind up losing his life for trying to be like God? When you look at Adam, all he was trying to do was be like God. Huh? None of these people knew. These people sat here and told us things and testified to things that they didn't know. It was revealed to them as being prophet, and how did they wind up doing it? Well, let's see how they wind up doing it. The third chapter of the book of Amos. Give me verse 6. Amos chapter 3 and verse 6. Listen to the book. Amos chapter 3, Amen. verse 6. Listen. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city, yeah. and the people not be afraid? Listen. Shall, shall there be evil in a city? And what happened? And the Lord hath not done it. So shall there be evil where? In a city. And what happened? And the Lord hath not done it. They killed Jesus in the city, didn't they? Well, who did it? Isaiah asked y'all who believed our report. And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He said, we held this man stricken, smitten of who? God. Smitten of who? God. Well, that got to make sense. We can't say the devil did it. We can't go put everything else on God and then come back and say the devil did it. He said, shut that one evil? The Lord said, didn't I do it? Then he said, for the covenants of his heart, was I wrong? Hmm. What did he say I did to him? I smote him. If it's evil done in the city, God said I did it. People don't want mama die, daddy die, sister die, kids die. Planes crash, trains crash, boats sink, winds, storms come and destroy, wipe out towns and country. Who did it? Lord. I don't know what y'all think about it. Why do people won't give a man any credit? It was a weather system came through. You're going to hell. Anything happened, Lord did it. 32nd chapter of the book of Deuteronomy, he told her, what did he say I do? I kill. I do what? I make a lie. I wound. I heal. He said, nobody can deliver out of my hands. Nobody. He took the son. Nobody could deliver the son. That's why he waited patiently. He waited on the father. That's right. They told him when he was up on the cross, let him, let him alone who they want to see. Let's see if Elias come to help him. He know good way he wasn't coming. You know, nobody can't deliver me out of my father's hand. That's why he told him to go ahead and take your rest. Son of man been delivered. I've been given over to the father. Ain't no use nobody trying to put, go ahead and put that sword back up. I talked, one time he talked to him about it. When I sent you out without anything, lacked anything, he told him what to sell and get it. You ain't got a sword, you better get you one. He go, two, it's enough. When you've been delivered over in the father, he realized nobody can deliver out the father's hand. He let them know, man, this stuff been written to me. You can't deliver me out there. Why he didn't even look? What am I going to be talking to you about? Once God stricken you, once God take you down, once God removed, anybody can get that out of the way. 14 shot right quick of the book of Jeremiah, verse 11. Y'all all all right tonight? He still hold me the third chapter of the book of uh, Amos. Wonderful saving. Y'all have actually no idea who y'all be playing with, do you? Y'all playing with a man that control your whole being. Every breath you beat, breathe, every heartbeat, every hair in your head, every move, ankle, muscle you got in your body controlled by God. That's right. At any time, he sucked the life out of you. That's right. At any time, he cripple you, blind you, take you down, remove, plant you, establish you, and bring you back up. That's God. That's why the Bible says he committed himself that judge justly. What's he going to do? He held it, held it peace and let the father do judge. When the father judged him, he already let the folk testify. Father tried to tell you, I say you, cause we were, and that includes me because our forefathers are so stupid, I don't find no fault with him. 
Bam, the sinner come along and try to tell us, I don't find no fault with him, truth be told. Listen to the book. 14 and verse 11. Yeah. Then said the Lord unto me, pray not for this people, for their good. What happened, son? When they fast, I will not hear their cry. Mm. And when they offer burnt offerings. What was Jesus doing up on that cross? Yeah. He preparing himself for a fast. Because when he got in the grave, three days or three nights, Esther already testified. Wait, what were we supposed to not do? He'd have drank for three days, three nights. He'd go in the grave. That was it. He was up there and he was crying. What happened, son? And when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, I will not accept them, but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Then said I, our Lord God, behold, the prophet say unto them, you shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Mm. That when these folks sit around and try to tell lies. That's why a man committed himself to him that judged justly. Anything that be done to you, whether it's good, bad, or evil, it's going to come from God. Any relief you're going to get, it's going to come from God. God will use people and let it come, but don't ever get yourself or get it twisted to think nobody did nothing for you. It was all God. Don't you ever get yourself so stupefied. Get your mindset telling them about a great doctor who can heal everything. Got to be God. Anything, it got to be him. That's right. If you get sick and you can't get up, and you feel like you ain't got no end to it. You feel like there's no remedy to what you got. Give it to God. God gave it to you. You got to wait on God. That's all any of us can do. As soon as we get our minds back to that, that state of acting and being, we're going to be a better people. That being honest with you, anything that if you go in your house, burn to the ground. They catch something out of here, crack here around, God burn your house to the ground. Your car gets stolen, your windows get busted out, and they catch the person who did it. It was God. That's right. He said, if it be evil done in a city, have not I the Lord did it? If you be smitten, if you be hated, you be mistreated on your jaw, it will all God. And once you get your mind set on that, then you start learning who to serve. That's what the son did. Why don't you start arguing with them? Y'all some dumb niggas sitting here finna nail me up. He brought, ain't no use of bottom with that. This is all God. Had to be all God. Hmm? Let's see what happened in the third chapter of the book of Lamentations. Lamentation chapter 3. Let's see about verse 17. Y'all all right? Lamentation chapter 3 and about verse 17. Listen to the book. And thou hast removed my soul. When thou hast did what now? Hast removed my soul. How that going to happen? When he cried and, when he cried aloud, but what did he give up? When thou has removed my soul. What happened, son? Far off from peace. Far off from peace. I forget prosperity. I forget all about trying to prosper. Come on. And I said, my strength and my hope is perished from the Lord. Come on. Remembering mine affliction and my misery. Listen. The a man acquainted with grief. I don't know what this got to do with nothing. Listen. The wormwood and the gall. Yeah. My soul hath them still in remembrance. Y'all hear that? He say still remember that. Come on. And it's humbled in me. And it humbled me. Come on. This I recall to my mind. Yeah. Therefore have I hope. Come on. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Come on. Because his compassions fail not. Come on. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Come on. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Yeah. Therefore will I hope in him. Listen. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Y'all hear that? That's why the son stayed after he came and moved the song. I don't need to go on nowhere. He said, favor them that wait on him. He didn't get up on his own. He sat right there like the Lord told him. Come on. To the soul that seeketh him. Yeah. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Come on, son. It is good for a man that, that he should bear the yoke in his youth. Y'all hear that? You go ahead and take the yoke. Come on. He sitteth alone and keepeth silence because he hath borne it upon him. Who is he? Who? Who? No, he is God. God put it on him. Listen. He putteth his mouth in the dust. If so be, there may be hope. He had to. That was a hope he told you, except you fall into the ground and die. Mm -hmm. He had to go in the ground. Who you think he put? He didn't put his own mouth in there. God did it. Who else going? Who else you going? Who you on to count this to? That he is God. God did it. Well, how can a dead man put his mouth in the ground? 
God did it. Come on, son. He giveth his cheek to him that smiteth him. Now you talk about him. He gave his cheek. Come on. He is filled full with reproach. Come on. For the Lord will not cast off forever. Y'all know what he looked at? He ain't going to be angry with me forever. That's the only reason he kept forgiving Israel. It wasn't about us. It was about the son. He put us through a long stretch, a, a hard death and famine and pestilence, crying and weeping. We got more of that than we got any victories. Who do you think we were actually mimicking? We were mimicking the son. That's all we were doing. So he was talking about us. When we went through our suffering, all these things, different things that happened, they come. And then the Lord would come back and he would have mercy on us. He won't be angry. He won't cast off hell. That's why we had to come back and get us. Because it was about the son. Once we learned it was the son, we realized we was a parallel. If we became the son, if we started to mimic and we became and got in the son, it was going to make a difference. Because the Bible says, if any man be like, hmm, be where? In where? What is he? A new creature? You said Abraham said? We're confident when you said it to him. <laughs> You notice the difference? He told you in Christ. Difference. You got to get in the son. That's the difference. In order for us to take on inheritance, we have to become part of the son. That's right. That's the only way. He's not giving out this promise to every individual as we've been thinking and been looking at it. We have to become the son. That's why he said, if you then be risen. That's right. When he got up, he said he rose for our justification. Are y'all all right? Amen. Come on, finish this up. But though he caused grief, yet will he have compassion. Who is he? God. God. Though who? But though he caused grief. Hard to believe God do that, huh? Don't really hard to be that because you got to be a dummy. The man told you he'd do it. Though he caused grief. He didn't cause himself no grief. What happened, son? Yet will he have compassion. Yet, what else will he going to do? Yet we have compassion. Come on. According to the multitude of his mercies. Listen. For he doth not afflict willingly. Who is he? God. God. Come on, son. Nor grieve the children of men. Willingly. He was just telling you he don't do it unrighteously. Come on, son. To crush under his feet all the prisoners of the earth. Where we get that from? Huh? Someone said, Nathan, dang, what about pure? The crush on his feet? Rope. Come on. To turn aside the right of a man before the face of the Most High. Yeah. To subvert a man in his cause. Yeah. The Lord approveth not. The Lord approveth not. Come on. Who is he that saith, and it cometh to pass, yeah. when the Lord commandeth it not? That's why he got Hananiah. Who said, I'm going to let y'all go in two years? I didn't say that. He want to know who, who told y'all you were saved when I say you was a sinner? Who told you? That's why the son didn't listen to none of them people talking about knowing lies coming. He know good well the lies weren't coming. The father hadn't said that. That's right. I won't call on no father. They're talking about he called on Elijah. Let's see. He called on Isaiah. Let's see if he come. Elijah. They were talking about Isaiah. He called on Isaiah. Let's see if Isaiah come to heaven. If that's what you think, I already know. That ain't what God said. Let's see how we know when God speaks. Pick remember that third chapter again in the book of Amos. You live out three and six. I want to make sure we get understanding before you leave him. I'm going to get ready and let y'all go. Ain't but so much you could take. We're trying to work on them 15 minute sermons so I can get y'all in and get y'all out. So y'all have more time to play in the street. This is the third chapter of the book of Amos at verse six. Listen. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city? And what happened? And the people not be afraid. Listen. Shall there be evil in a city? And have not who? The Lord has not done it. Who else going to do it? Come on, son. Surely the Lord God will do nothing. Except he do what? Reveal it, his, reveal it his secret unto his servants, the prophets. That's why he came along and started telling the people what was going to happen. He told me in the 18th chapter of Book of Luke, about verse 31, he told the apostle, son of man got to go up to Jerusalem, be delivered in the wicked hands. And be marked of the chief priest and the scribe, and the third day he's going to resurrect. Sure, the Lord don't do nothing except he revealed his servant to who? Prophet. That's why he told him. And the multitude said in the 21st chapter of the book of Matthew, verse 11, and the multitude said, This is who? The Jesus of who? Of Nazareth. 
of Nazareth. The what? Of Galilee. They didn't pay attention to their own law, did they? He sat there and tried to tell them he was going to be delivered. He said he's going to be mocked of them. They came right along and started. He said they stick their tongue out at me. They started mocking me in duration. Look what he said at the 22nd Division of Psalm right quick. 22 and 9. You know, it's bad a man come along and speak nothing but Bible and people don't believe it. Mm-hmm. So how you think that look when you sit here and y'all get taught nothing but Bible and you don't believe it? Mm-hmm. You're in the same boat they were in. All the man was speaking was the book. Man said he going to go up to Jerusalem. He going to be marked. And what is Jerusalem by interpretation? City of peace. City of what? Peace. City of what? Peace. Has it been evil to the city and have not how the Lord did it? Hmm? City of peace. That's what Jerusalem means. There were evil in Jerusalem. Lord said, didn't I do that? Isaiah told it, smitten of God. I smitten him. I'm the one that smite you. He told Israel, he sat there and he smited them. So they don't even know. They don't even consider. I'm the one hitting you. But when you got on the blindfold, what you gonna do? You just start throwing names and people out. Isn't that right? Whole time we were sitting there. He said, they don't even consider it's me the one that's stricken them. He was talking about the son. You think the son didn't know who was hitting him? But look at us. Come on, son. Listen to the book. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. Yeah. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Yeah. Thou art my God from my yeah, mother's then. belly. I was cast out. You know, as a woman do now, baby born, they call her. See, this your baby. That's right. This your, you be like, whoa, whoa. He said, I will call yours from the womb. Come on. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Yeah, uh oh. That's what he called. That's what, what did the, what did the angel tell? Let's see, Matthew 20, Matthew 1 right quick. Verse 19, my mind running. Y'all all right? Listen to the book. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her public. Make Turn her him public up a example, little bit. He sound low. Come on. Was minded to put her away privately. But while, the, but while he thought on these things. What happened, son? Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream. And what happened? Saying, Joseph, thou son of David. So if you get spoken to in a dream. Private. That private. According to the chapter book of Numbers, I the Lord make myself known to him, I do it to him in a or dream. in a dream. Listen. Fear not to take unto thee, Mary, thy wife. What happened? For that which is conceived in her is of the Ruach Akadesh. He said, I will call your from the womb. How, you think David knew that? Here goes Joseph getting ready to put her away, and the angel of the Lord just appeared to him in a dream and tell that man, said, that's what's inside of her womb. Say that's mine. He said, I will call you from the womb. You think David knew he was prophesying what he was saying? Nope. And the angel come right along and tell Joseph that. Say, that's my baby. And he said, hey, you know what it looked like? They sit up here and want to know, which one of y'all in here? Who can this here? That, that be my baby. <laughs> All right, I'm that baby pappy. Ain't that right? Lord, step right on four, left nine. Ain't no use of playing no game. I be that boy pappy. He said, I will call you from the womb. That's amazing. The book come right on and let you know why it had to happen like that. Couldn't wait that after he got here and announced it. Let him know but why he was yet in the womb. That's mine. That's mine. That's right. Come on back to that 22nd chapter, 22nd yeah. division of Psalm. Don't it just make sense when you start reading? Yeah. You would think, here goes Joseph, ready to go wrong and look at, she pregnant. I got opportunity to go ahead and put her away now for that kid get here. Because it'd be a big mess and everybody want to know who baby is and ain't mine. And I'm going to go ahead and put an angel come appear to him and I say, that's what's inside of her. That's mine. Then realize, I was doing fulfilling scripture. That's right. I was doing fulfilling scripture. So I will call yours from the womb. Come on. Be not far from me, for trouble is near. Yeah. For there is none to help. What they doing? Come on, son. 
Many bulls have compassed me. Yeah. Strong bulls of Bashan yeah. have beset me round. Yeah. They gaped upon me with their mouths. Yeah. As a ravening and a roaring lion. Yeah. I am poured out like water. Yeah. And all my bones are out of joint. Yeah. My heart is like wax. Yeah. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Mm -hmm. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. Yeah. And my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. Yeah. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. Mm -hmm. Come on. For dogs have compassed me. Yeah. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. Come on. They pierced my hands and my feet. What else they do? I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. He said, I can see all my bones. And these folk looking and staring at me. Is that Bible? What did it say? They shall look on him whom they pierce. He said, he said I can see all my bones. I can look and I can actually, let me tell you something. Oh, Lord, it's so good. But we'll leave that. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior. Come on, finish. They part my garments among them mm -hmm. and cast lots upon my vesture. Mm -hmm. But be not thou far from me, O Lord. O my strength, haste thee to help me. Yeah. Deliver my soul from the sword. And? My darling from the power of the dog. Yes. What, back me up about verse 9. Let me see what 9 say. Listen. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Mm -hmm. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. Come on. Did you jump? I think it's some message you should say. Come on. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Uh -huh. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Mm -hmm. Be not far from me. Back me up about verse 7. Listen. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. <laughs> what they do, son? They shoot out the lip. Mm -hmm. They shake the head. Yeah. Saying, he trusted on the Lord. What that, happened? That he would deliver him. What did he say? Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. Do you actually think they walked by and they knew what they were saying? Amen. Mm -hmm. Matthew recorded them just walking by, just wagging their head at him, and just looking at him. But he told the apostle they were going to do this stuff. He was willing to sit here and suffer that if it got him the glory to sit here to be with God. Look at the fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians, 4 and 8. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Wonderful Savior. Amen. Listen to the book. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high. He did what? Led captivity captive. Wherefore he did what now? When he ascended up on high. He did what? He led captivity captive. And what did he give? And gave gifts unto men. What did that mean? Come on. Now that he ascended. What happened? What is it that, what is it, but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? How did he wind up falling? He was, he done ascended up above and, and sat on the throne of God and went up above all heavens. And then Isaiah wanted to know, how did he fall? He said the first thing he had to do was fall. Because here when Paul started telling us at verse 8 again. Wherefore he said. When he did what? I wonder up. where he said this at. Who know where he probably said this at? Because this is what he said. When he ascended up on high. He did what? Led he didn't say he did it. He said he said it in his heart. And what did he do? Led captivity captive. Yeah. And gave gifts unto men. So what does this mean? Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the he earth? He said it makes sense. He was Lucifer. It makes sense. In order for Adam to become the true son of God, he had to die. You can't take on all that knowledge. You can't take on no attributes of God and keep living as a man. Hmm? You're going to have to die. When Isaiah seen him, what did he say? Undone. Undone. Like a dead man. What's going to happen? You take on the peers and the true knowledge of God, you're going to have to wind up dying. It only makes sense for us. Y'all got to think deeper than where you've been. 
you got to go further than where you ever gone before. You got to be willing now to make a bigger sacrifice than what you've done since you first came. And a lot of you, you hadn't grown. The knowledge has increased. The word had been preached without a doubt. But a lot of you guys had not made no real transition. So the word doesn't have any really um, um, validity with you. Because you hadn't actually made no change. You wonder why. What's the problem? What's the problem? Probably ain't never been with the word. The word has always increased, hasn't it? That's right. Let's be honest now. Fault got to put it somewhere. Is it the word? Had the word been stagnated? We've lacked knowledge. Lacked knowledge. We've got no information. Then why you hadn't grown and taken on the spirit? Then you call yourself everybody named Jonah today. Where the faults at, Jonah? Where the faults at, Jonah? Me. In us. No, faults in me. Don't put it on us. Faults in me. Me, Jonah. Faults in me. That's what everybody said. Faults in me. If it ain't the word, then where the fault at, Jonah? Faults in me. Faults in me. That's why he would start telling y'all about the sign of the prophet Jonah as well. He tried to tell you what he did. He said, I bear their reproach, which meant the fault is in me. I say, hey, you got to be honest with yourself. You come in here, you got to try to obtain the spirit. You got to fight past every other obligation, every other thing that you're dealing with, whether it's in your marriage or family issue, health issues, whatever it is. These things going to limit you from obtaining the spirit. You got to look at coming through and what we're seeking to do. We're always going to deal with something. But what we've been conditioned to do is to still take on the image and the, and the light express image of the sun. We got to be able to do that. And you lack it because y'all got yourself intertwined with so many other things. You don't even think about what you got to do. You don't even really consider. You think you're going to come here, you're going to sit down, word going to teach you, and then the word going to do it too. Only, word, only thing the word designed to do is do what it's doing. Just make sure you get the information. That's all it was able to do, give you the information. Even with Adam, you think Adam is going to take on being like God and you ain't going to have to do nothing? You have to suffer something. You had to suffer something. He can say all you want. Y'all. Everybody ain't hard, no doubt. Here. I don't believe nobody here or watching this. I want to go to hell. That's why I'm watching. I want to pair. You watch it and you listen because you say, I want to be like God. I want to be saved. Just not willing to take the fruit to do it, though. You're not willing to do it. That's what he wanted the apostle to know when they asked him. You willing to drink of the same cup I drink of? You eat the same thing I'm willing to do? To be able to sit where he said, I'm sitting. To be able to dwell where he at. He said, well, indeed, you're going to do it. We are saying we want to be like the sun. We want to become the sun. And we got to put ourselves up and be ready to be able to offer ourselves. The Bible said we're offered just like sheep to the slaughter. Ain't that right? That's what we got to do. We got to be ready to be offered. Whatever it takes, we got to fulfill the writing of the word. That's the only way we're going to be saved. That's right. And I used to play a whole lot of games about it. Your soul on the line. Amen. You dying while you sitting here. You dying. And you think, what help can you be to somebody else? Everybody in here, we all be dead men, dead women. You can't help nobody. It's all you can do to save yourself alive. That's all you can do at the end of the day. You ain't got enough to save nobody else. You ain't got enough prayer to pray to help nobody else. All you got at best is just enough that hopefully you get it. And you're a fool if you think any other way. It's going to take all you got for you to get in. It's going to take everything in you to fight past you to get in. Everybody that's not your problem, not big as you are, because you let people become your problem. You can't make pe- people can't make themselves your problem unless you let them. People can't steer you off unless you let them. That's why he letting you no concern to him. Please don't think nobody came and got me off course to stop me from what I was doing to lead me up here. I did it willingly. Let you know the same thing when you go to hell. You're going to willingly go to hell. Nobody going to get you. I know fall prophet going to lead these people to hell. They going to care themselves to hell. They know. They heard the sound of the trumpet. They know it's wrong and they sat and they continue to do it in a way and they ought to go to hell. Look tight, huh? But you got life, so you got opportunity to make some choices. Continue to be the same person you are. That's why your life is raggedy. That's why everything you get a hold of is raggedy and it never works. It never pans out for you because it's just raggedy. You got a shabby lifestyle. You got a shabby servitude toward God. And why would God give you anything but recompense you trouble? 
If you got something good, it's going to turn around and be a curse to you. Simply because you're not willing to do what it takes. Time for us to make a change, Jonah. Y'all hear me, Jonah? Time for us to make a change, Jonah. Who the fault's in? Me. Paul sent me. That's our new name. We brother and sister Jonah. Y'all hear me? First thing to start with is mean your fault. That's right. First thing I'm like, oh, no, it's Leon. It, no, no, no. Paul sent me. And I'm used to asking why this whole world in a minute. These people want to know why the weather off scale and why stuff coming on, why California ain't got no rain. Certainly California ain't done nothing. Alaska ain't done nothing for no icebergs to start melting or dilapidate. I'm getting paid. We the problem. The only reason why that land became uninhabited, the land in Jerusalem didn't do anything. It was the people in Jerusalem. And God going to come back and everybody got to suffer. When he came and destroyed the land before, who would have fought? Who he said? Because the people, their imagination were only evil continually. You don't never stop thinking about sinning. Drinking, lying, clubbing, smoking, homonging, stealing, robbing God, disobeying God's word. Why wouldn't God come back and destroy that place? Everything we're doing is the same makeshift makeup they had to get it destroyed before. We did chemistry to get this place burned up. Nobody can get God harder than us. Who moved into jealousy? Who? Who? I thought he said the nigga. I'm like, who? The people. What did he call them? Just run. Say so you wax fat and you wind up kicking. Made sense now when he came on the 30th chapter of the book of Proverbs and said he didn't want to get too much. Let's he do what? Let's he forget God. Why do you think he came and stripped all that stuff off of us? He said, if I get too much, I already know I'm going to wind up forgetting God. Yeah. If I get too poor, Curse. I'm going to wind up cursing God and stealing. He knew exactly what he was doing when he came through him. I need to know how to level myself while I don't ever forget about God. He knew exactly. That's what happened to us. He came along later. What did he wind up telling us about us? Hardy. Stretch forth next, wanting eyes. Soon as we got all those things, what did he say? It wound up being our downfall. Time to reposition yourselves. Time to recondition your minds, folks, to make sure you get this thing in. It's real critical right now. Every one of us in here, we dying. It's stuff, it's a heartbeat that your heart just did. It won't do that particular beat again. It won't continue to keep being forever. It's a breath you take, you can't go and get back. It's the stuff you're doing, you leave it. Do y'all know why y'all sitting here, those of you with hair, that's not completely bald hair, that your body just signals and it gives all hair? You're losing little strands of hair because you're leaving here. you leaving here. Your body doing a whole lot of stuff you pay no attention to. Huh? Some of you look, you got white drawers on, you look, you got a gold spot. Your body, you leaving here. Oh, a little bit every time your body screeches just a little urine. Oh, some of you, know, oh, my goodness. I didn't know I actually had it. Oh, some of you, y'all know you're guilty. I didn't know I actually had the urine. Oh, yeah, you know. He let you know you're losing control, baby. You sit and wonder why you let a little brown spot in there. Oh, it's funny, but it's the truth. We guilty. Go ahead. Jonah, where the faults at, Jonah? Me. Faults in me. Stuff you used to be able to control and watch. Sometimes you sitting there, and I find myself out sitting there. And then know my mouth oh, it's a slug. You try, you try to go get it, it'd be too late. You ain't try to go get, go get it, it'd be too late. You said, what in the world? He letting you know, you leaving him. Anybody right. are guilty? Amen. Paul sent me, it's like, when I was a, never had that happen. If I say you be sitting, you don't know, stand up. <laughs> That's not, not, not. <laughs> you try to get it, be like, what in the world happened? He know, he letting you know, you out of control. That's right. He letting you know, you know what some of us say, I just can't lose control. I got to keep control. That's what God said. That's been the problem. I got to show you losing control. I got to show you can't. You ain't keeping nothing together. You becoming unglued. You can't hold it in. You've been trying to. You can't. I'm going to make you stop and show you. You need a God. That's what he did in Nebuchadnezzar. You've been ruling. You've been carrying. Everybody come to you. Now I cut you down to the ground. Now you sit down and you're going to get out here and you like an animal. Your nails grow long like an like a eagle. Your hair grow all long. Now you know what you say now? Most high God ruling the kingdom of men. 
to give it to whom he will. Whole time I thought I did it. I thought it was a great business. I thought I was a success story. How I came up from nothing. And God brought you right back down to rubbles. And now he make you say, most high God ruling the kingdom of men. He give it to whom he will. He give life, death to whom he will. The only reason he didn't give you death today, because he's he gracious to you. But how long? How long God going to continue to be gracious to you? Eventually you're going to leave him. Y'all got caught in the snare with the devil, didn't you? Your life is miserable. Nothing going right. Everything you want, you hadn't got it. Why God won't let this work? Why God won't let this happen? Because everything you want and you've been desiring ain't been nothing to save your soul. That's why God ain't gave it to you. He's been trying to turn you the whole time to get you to see truth and get your life right. But you've been so dumbfounded. All you've been looking at how God ain't been good to you as he's been to other people. Why other people got, why this ain't happening to other people? You ain't realizing there's a lot of people dead too. There's more people dead than they're living. The grave got more than what's on top of this earth now. Whole lot of people been through him before we came through, and a whole lot more gonna be here after you gone. To God cut time off with everybody. And you hadn't considered God been real gracious to you just to keep you here. Just to let you hear a word to warn you before you burn in hell. While we sit here, somebody being eulogized. Oh, they eat now. <laughs> Nigga just told another lie. Yeah. Somebody just pulled out the bill out the trunk. Cause the family real religious and they don't want it in now. So put it in a cup. I got family, you pop the trunk and pull in a cup and close the can back down now and have the cup like you ain't got. Nigga, everybody smell your breath. Yep. I don't care what cup you put it in. That's right. It's part of the, the, the solace of how they make a fool out of people. Sit here and program and make them start thinking, thinking good. Pour a little bit out for my nigga. Drink to them. All that fools and these folk put in our mind. Eventually, you're going to be on a casket. You're going to be on a grave. Every one of us saying, everybody watching in. Where are you going to lift your eyes up in the day of judgment? That's what people don't want to deal with. What you going to do in the day of judgment when you sing? Make sure you get it right. Finish me at the ninth chapter of the book of Hebrews. Info. 928. That's right. Kinfolk family reunion. Listen to the book. At verse 1? At verse, no, Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. Amen. Listen. So Christ was once offered. 27. Amen. Listen. And as it is appointed unto men once to die. Even the son. You're a man. You come in. You got to leave. That's right. People don't want to deal with you. You living. You got to leave. As it is appointed unto men. Once to die. After this. The judgment. So. Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him. Ain't to everybody. When his appearance comes, it's going to be dark on one side and light on the other. Unto them that look to him the second time, it's going to be light. We learn that from Goshen. Upon the Israelites, it was light. On the Egyptian, complete darkness. It's going to be wailing and gnashing the teeth when they come back. Because they pierced him. Listen. And unto them that... Sh- Look for him, shall he appear the second time. Without who? Sin, unto salvation. At the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew, verse 47. This is the 13th chapter of the book of Matthew, at verse 47. Listen to the book. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a net yeah. that was cast into the sea. And what happened? And gathered of every kind. Yeah. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore. Yeah. And sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. Listen. So shall it be at the end of the world. Y'all hear that? They come back. You know, they're two different gatherings. When they gather me, it's going to be a separation. Listen. The angels shall come forth. And do what? Sever the wicked. From among the just. God's going to separate it. That's why he called Israel out. He called Israel out. How many days he made them go out and do sacrifice? Well, three days he had them to go out and do sacrifice. That's what the son did when he was in the grave. He sacrificed. He decided not to live, stay with the living. 
Israel. Come on, folks. That's it, firstborn. Listen. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire. Listen. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. I don't know what the people think is going to happen. What, what, who gave us this, this fake philosophy that Jesus is coming back here and going to save all these people? All these people done died and sitting in Jesus' lap. All these fat folk, they'd have been broke that man's kneecap. What are you going to do to all them people on their knee? They always taking some Santa Claus nigger stuff and sticking it on Jesus. Getting your kid talking about no toys? Your kid got enough foolishness going on. Come on. Jesus saith unto them, yeah. have ye understood all these things? And what did they say? Son? They say unto him, yea, Lord. So what did he tell them? Then said he unto them, yeah. therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven. Is like what? Unto a man that is an householder. Which doth what? Bringeth forth out of his treasure. Some what? New and old. Thank the Lord. That's good, brother. Thank the Lord.